Parkinson's needs to watch its dang back, with a bold new treatment becoming available. Peanut allergic adults may finally be able to maybe have some Reese's Pieces, and pharmacies are giving the Flash a run for his money by speeding up their own delivery. That's just some of what we're talking about on today's Super Speedy RX Report, where you get your health and your news delivered. I'm your host, Mason Manuel, coming to you from the home of pharmacy here at the American Pharmacists Association. Now, we've got a lot to get into today, so be sure to click that like and subscribe button, leave a comment on anything and everything that we talk about today, and potentially be our lucky gift card winner. And let's dive in. It's unfortunately not breaking news to say that Parkinson's is a devastating disease. Around 1 million in the U.S. live with the brain disease as it attacks neurons that make dopamine. As those neurons die, patients can suffer from symptoms like tremors, cognitive issues, fatigue, and more. Those that live with it and those that care for those that live with it are some of the strongest people in the world as they meet each and every new day. But that is why I am so happy to report that at long last, those diagnosed with Parkinson's may finally see some relief. Let me explain. You've probably heard about stem cells by now. We've talked about them on this show, about their potential for other cures and treatments that could actually stem from said stem cells. Very basically, stem cells are able to self-renew through a process called differentiation. Then, depending on where they are located, stem cells can develop into different tissues like bone marrow, brain cells, heart muscle cells, like really important cells. Basically, they are extremely flexible cells that can copy themselves. So what do they have to do with Parkinson's? Well, in two recent small studies where stem cells were transplanted into the brains of Parkinson's patients, those patients began to produce dopamine, the neurotransmitter targeted by their disease. Patients also then saw an ease of their symptoms, including their tremors. In simpler terms, this stem cell treatment basically stopped the further development of Parkinson's in patients, like stopped it from developing. I cannot overstate how incredible that is. Parkinson's is a merciless disease, and it really hurts the people and families affected, and now we may finally see a light at the end of the tunnel. To get you even more excited, this is not one of those treatments that you hear about once and then it just disappears. One of the stem cell trials was approved for phase three study by the FDA, which is the final step before approval for the masses. So how did these studies work? Scientists injected a stem cell product into each side of the patient's brain that's involved with movement. There were high-dose and low-dose treatments to see a difference in reaction, and the high-dose stem cell receivers were found to have more improvement than the low-dose ones, but all saw a basic upgrade in ability. To put a cherry on top of this study, as of recording, no patients in these studies have experienced a serious adverse event in reaction to this material, which is really shocking for an experimental drug therapy. Curing or treating Parkinson's is not a new effort. There have been attempts for decades with little success. Now with this new study, there is hope on the horizon, not just for Parkinson's, but other brain diseases like Alzheimer's and epilepsy. And that is amazing. But what do you think about this potential Parkinson's treatment? Does it affect you or someone you know, someone you love? Let me know in those comments. I'd love to hear. A few weeks ago on this show, we reported how a new exposure therapy to peanut butter could let allergic kids overcome said allergy. I got a couple of notes afterwards saying, I mean, that's great for my kids, but what about me? Yes, the important question. Well, your parental priorities aside, fear not, RX Report moms and dads, science has not forsaken you. A new clinical trial tested peanut exposure therapy on allergic adults for the first time. Exposure therapy is basically what it sounds like, where people are slowly exposed to ever-increasing doses of something harmful to them until their bodies adapt to no longer reacting so heavily. For any Count of Monte Cristo fans out there, it's pretty much the same thing that Notier did to Valentine to keep her from being poisoned. Uh, P.S. That is my favorite book of all time, by the way. Definitely give it a read. Uh, anyway, back to peanut butter. Usually with exposure therapy, children are more successful targets because their bodies and immune systems are more able to more or less evolve in early life. The methods of this trial were very simple, where people between the ages of 18 and 40 were treated to daily doses of peanut flour mixed in their regular food, with the goal being for patients to be able to consume a gram of peanut flour without reaction for at least four weeks. Afterwards, the patients did daily dosing for three more months before leaving the trial completely. And according to a senior researcher on the study, uh, Dr. Stephen Till, he said, quote, the average tolerated dose of peanuts increased 100-fold over the course of this trial. 
Now, these adults who could have gone into anaphylactic shock be being around peanuts can actually now consume them without massive issue. But have you had to deal with peanut allergies while your friends got all the good peanut butter snacks? What do you think about adults' immune systems actually being shown to have the potential to evolve? Fingers crossed that we can come up with uh, that tolerance amount in the near future so that we can enjoy Reese's Pieces and nut butters together. But until then, let me know your thoughts in those comments. So who here has spent way too much on one day shipping? Anyone? Anyone? Just me? Uh, for those of you proudly saying you don't pay for it because you have Amazon Prime, you're absolutely still paying for it in those membership costs, or more likely, your mom is paying for it. Anyway, fast shipping is undeniably addictive. If it almost feels like magic these days where you see something online and it arrives at your door in a day or even less. That's great for toys and chia pets or whatever, but what about things that are actually needed, like prescriptions? Medicines have this weird relationship with being mailed, as they need to be kept at certain temperatures sometimes, some are controlled substances that can't just be left on a doorstep, and there are a lot of legal hurdles to actually hop over. All of these are valid concerns to mailing drugs, but the reality is many struggle to just travel to their closest pharmacy to receive their needed prescriptions. So what is really the solution here? Well, thankfully, many pharmacies do allow mailing prescriptions for at least some drugs. Independent pharmacies have done the same day deliveries for years, especially for patients who are homebound or recovering from surgeries, according to a friend of the show, Vice President of Professional Affairs here at APHA, Dr. Bridget Groves. Hi, Bridget. But independent pharmacies have limited reach and can only really go so far. However, business titans like Walmart and Amazon have no such problems and are undergoing massive national expansions to enable some same day prescription delivery a trend which has gained momentum since the COVID-19 pandemic. CVS now does same-day deliveries, as does some Walgreens. Apps like Instacart and DoorDash enable entities like Costco, Wegmans, and Publix to also provide same-day delivery. This increased speed has several obvious benefits. For one, it can help mitigate the issue of pharmacy deserts, where many live way too far away from their closest pharmacy to feasibly access their prescriptions regularly. Secondly, same-day deliveries can get people started quicker on antibiotics or COVID-19 treatments and other care that is needed right now instead of later. Amazon executive Hannah McKellen, who recently gave a presentation on this topic, said that patients who get their prescriptions quickly are actually more likely to take them, which, you know, is a definite upside, especially when you're dealing with these serious illnesses. Now, it's no secret that while same-day delivery is nice, it can get a bit pricey. When my McDonald's Nuggets order goes from $7 to $20 when I lazily decide to get that delivered, I feel the hurt, and that's not a delivery I need like regular people do for their medications. Also, mail prescriptions are great, but there is some care that can only be done in person at a pharmacy, negating the benefits of that service. Finally, insurance, everyone's favorite team player, could add or remove coverage more or less on a whim, which could be an issue if you have drugs set for auto delivery where one time they're covered and then the next time they're not. So I've got to ask you, do the pros outweigh the cons here? Does getting easier access to prescriptions nix the issue of raised costs for you? Let me know in those comments below. And that is our show. If this podcast made you want to read The Count of Monte Cristo or see the new Pierre Nini film, which is way better than the Jim Caviezel film, don't at me, then maybe click that like button, click that subscribe button, and leave us a comment, and maybe you could be our lucky gift card winner. Speaking of which, a hearty congratulations to Charlene Stiles, who left us a wonderful comment last week. Thank you, Charlene. Our executive producer is Rob Hodges. Our creative producer is Kate Erdman. Until next time, I've been your host, Mason Manuel. Be sure to tune in next Friday for more RX Report, where you get your health, your news delivered. But till then, bye, y'all.